Well, Belgium is today following some of the strict measures implemented here in France. Their lockdown uh, begins this afternoon. And for more on it, we can speak to Dave Keating, who is our correspondent in Brussels. Uh, Dave, hello to you. Um, first of all, uh, I think you're out in Brussels today. As I can see, there you are outside. Tell us a bit about uh, where you are and how this lockdown is going to affect people uh, out in the streets today. Yeah, I'm in front of Mannequin Piss, which is the most well-known symbol of Brussels and indeed of all of Belgium. And we just heard the church bells ring out 12 o'clock noon. That means the lockdown is starting here in Belgium. Uh, now, the streets are fairly, fairly empty uh, compared to a normal time. And indeed, normally at this time of day, Mannequin Piss would be just surrounded by tourists. You can barely see him. Now, there's nobody here. Uh, now, the lockdown in Belgium is way less stringent than in Italy and a bit less stringent than in France. Uh, people cannot leave their homes unless they're going food shopping, they're going to the doctor, or they're going to essential work. And now companies have to prove to the government, if they're going to have their employees come in, they have to prove to the government that their work is essential, and also that they can guarantee that their employee is going to have social distancing in their transport to the office. There's speculation that that may involve companies having to transport the employees to work themselves. Uh, now this this measure is going to be in place until April 5th. The Prime Minister telling Belgians last night that this is necessary to stop the rapid spread of the virus. Uh, and we'll see if other countries follow suit. Dave, of course, a number of key EU institutions are based where you are in Brussels. How is this lockdown going to affect uh, the running of the EU? Well, as of Monday, all of the staff in both the Commission and the European Parliament have to work from home, again, unless their job is absolutely essential. I'm told that the criteria for determining an essential job uh, has just gone way up with the Belgian order. So really, barely anybody will be going into the Commission and Parliament. They're having some technical problems with the teleworking so far at the Commission. It's an organization of 32,000 employees. And so trying to get everybody hooked online is proving difficult. Uh, also, meetings are being cancelled or run digitally. Next week, we were supposed to have a European Council summit here in Brussels with all 27 EU leaders coming. That, it was just announced last night, will be a video conference instead, uh, just like the one that they held last night when they decided to close the EU border. So, really, it does look like the EU institutions are not going to be running at full capacity. Now, the European Parliament wants to stress that it is staying open, but this week they changed the schedule to be a so-called white week. That means that there's no vote. So basically, the European Parliament has postponed any kind of legislative activity. That's no committee votes, no full plenary votes. And we'll see what they do for next week, because Monday they are scheduled to start voting again. Now, I'm told at the European Parliament they're looking into possible digital solutions, even solutions that could allow digital voting, which right now is isn't allowed. This is also a problem for the council. Next week, when those leaders came, they had things they needed to adopt. And the rules say that they have to vote for those measures in person. Uh, so they're looking at possible solutions to how to do digital voting, both in the parliament and the council, as people hunker down here. For the long run, it does seem like this is going to be uh, many weeks. And the EU institutions need to keep legislating, especially in a time of crisis. Uh, at the very least, the European Parliament needs to be able to pass the emergency measures that the Commission proposes. For instance, the change in slot regulation that's supposed to help airlines from going out of business. That needs to be voted on and approved by the Parliament and the Council. Right now, the rules say that those rules have to take place in person, which seems not possible. So they're desperately looking for digital solutions and how to hold that voting. All right, Dave Keating, for us there uh, in Brussels with all the latest. Thank you very much indeed for bringing us up to speed uh, from there.